Welcome back. Dirk, but let me put this to you. You've relied on Van der Vestas and Jay's judgment for a little while now, about dignity. Well, no, the main judgment says that. Yes, but the so does he. But say... here's what he says, which is a point that I want to put to you. He says it is absolutely correct that the problem with any of these measures is it may, it doesn't necessarily always, it may affront the dignity it's inevitable. of an individual. Well, yes. But on the other hand, Apartheid affronted the dignity of millions mm -hmm. and our historical obligation, which is why Van der Vestas and Jay cites Kennedy, is to address that historical past. And therefore, in dealing with this, you've got to have some balance. Do you accept that? Yes. Do you accept there are going to be occasions where individuals are going to say, it's unfair, I didn't get that job because I was white, but in fact, the plan as a whole promotes a greater social good. No, definitely. Can, we agree to that. You know, so you the, agree the to proper, affirmative action? We agree to affirmative action, but the proper implementation of affirmative action... Well, tell me action, what it is that how you can you How can you say that we are implement? We, are, we have a suitable candidate, we have a candidate that excelled, we have a candidate that have, that have exceptional characteristics, she will advance service delivery. That's the, what the panel said. That's what the interviewing panel said. Yeah, of course. That's what the divisional commissioner said. He recommends that to Although the Although service commission. delivery wasn't necessarily an issue, for we know that. How, from, from but how can evidence. we say that? But leave aside. Yeah. Let's not get so, into the intricacies. So, but yeah. you leave, now you leave a position vacant in the name of affirmative action. Who did you protect and who did you advance but if from you, the designated group? Can I just group? put this to you? If, for example, you've got a plan which says we have to transform the police or the judiciary, or whatever other organization we want to choose. Mm. If you continuously appoint white people into vacancies, you can never do that. Well, the question is, is the answer on to your... your line of argument, on your line of argument, take the judiciary. Mm -hmm. On your line of argument, if I could have found you 100 better white judges than black ones in 1994, I'm not saying I could have, I'm just saying hypothetically, mm. if I could have... Mm -hmm. then they should have all been appointed and we could never have transformed the judiciary. I think Isn't the, there a greater good? The, well, does the end justify the means here? Is because that the argument? The question, no, the real question here is, can you say that we, sh sh we should not appoint any white people? Is no, that, the, is that what not, we say? I don't think this judgment says that. Well, if that's not what the judgments say and if that's not what we're debating, then we say that kind of affirmative action we support. But to support a form of affirmative action where positions are left vacant in the name of affirmative action, that doesn't, where does that promote and or advance any form of okay, affirmative all right. action? Yes, 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 yes. How do you put that? That's not actually correct. To I'm say, coming to you as well now. To say that positions were left vacant in the name of affirmative action. That position wasn't left vacant, wasn't left vacant simply because uh, there were no black people to be put in. It was left vacant because the commissioner at the time considered that the position was not uh, a key position to be the filled. The commissioner didn't even testify at court. There was no evidence. The guy, the, 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 Mr. Ramatoka from mm -hmm. the SAPS who testified, he's from HR. He only could testify on what's the employment equity plan right. and the national but instructions. Let's, let's well, but, move, but, sorry, but let's I move away from the check. Or yeah. Are you going to answer that? But mm -hmm. I'm not so worried about that. Let me, let me just spin the debate a little bit. Because, frankly, the public are not only interested in what happened here, they're interested in what implications they have for the future. So what happens, for example, if you do have a case where you've got a white candidate and a black candidate, mm -hmm. and the white candidate scores much higher than the black candidate? Mm -hmm. And let's assume that the, the black candidate passes muster, but the white candidate is significantly higher. Mm -hmm. And it is a crucial place for service delivery. Yes. And I've got too many white people mm -hmm. in my... Compliment. What do I do then? Well, there's a very simple answer. You appoint the black candidate. Even if service delivery is going to be compromised? Well, no, not if service delivery is going to be compromised. Now, How do I determine the facts, that then? Well, the facts in Barnard, let's, let's take you back yeah. to Barnard. The facts in Barnard was all three candidates had scored above average. And Barnard herself, sorry, I don't want to, to seem disrespectful, Captain Barnard herself conceded that if any of the other two black males had been appointed, um, was this thing, um, service delivery was not going to be affected. So on your example, if the black candidate gets, let's say the, uh, the, the threshold is 60%, if the black candidate gets 65% and the white candidate gets 70% and white candidates or white males are overrepresented at that level, Fair there is no reason why 
black, the black candidate should, shouldn't and be appointed. And can I ask you, what happens if the white candidate, gets, uh, sorry, gets 85% and the black candidate gets 60%? If 60% is the threshold... Even case, if you've got a quite outstanding white candidate. It doesn't matter. The fact is this. Mm -hmm. The okay. fact is this. Let's go back to the Employment Equity Act. The Employment Equity Act. The Employment... Excuse me, just a second. The Employment Equity uh, Act sets the standard about... It says suitably qualified persons. That's Section 15.3 of the Employment Equity Act. I'm sure you know about this. And it defines what suitably... Um, qualified people are in section 20 subsection 3 of the EEA. There are four factors. It's not just qualification, it's not high marks, it's not prior learning, it's also the capacity within a reasonable period to be able to perform the job. Fair enough. So what do you say? I, I mean I don't disagree with that but I also think that the point that must be made here is that the equity plan of SAPS was not the legality and constitutionality of the plan was not adjudicated. No, no. So but I'm intrigued in if it was, what would have happened exactly. then? And so I'm much more interested in what you think. You see, I don't want you to duck behind Barnard because mm. everybody in mm. Barnard can say it was an unusual case. Mm. It is true, as Ms. Nawana says, quite rightly, that in fact, weirdly in this case, there were two black candidates. The second time round, somebody got away about 77. I mean, there was a, only a 7 or 8 yeah, percent seven difference seven, between yeah. the black candidate and the white candidate. In yeah. fact, the black candidate was an outstanding candidate. It may not have been as outstanding as the white candidate, but was an outstanding candidate. Mm -hmm. So if that candidate had been appointed, I don't think the Dr. Bo uh, sorry, um, uh, uh, Colonel Barnard would have. So I'm, I want to get moved. Mm -hmm. Just tell me in general terms, what's your approach? If a black candidate gets 60 percent and is qualified, and the white candidate gets 85 percent. What does your policy say? Building on the equity plan, I mean, we've seen that when the court is called on to adjudicate on the use of quotas, for example, we saw the Naidu case in which she was excluded from a position because she didn't make the percentile. There was no room for them. So what we're saying is that that shows that, you know, quotas are very problematic. And in a case where you have that situation, 60 percent for a black candidate, 85 percent for a white, uh, white candidate, if the equity plan makes provision for that, and it can be determined that it is rational and reasonable, then the black candidate should get the but job. But it's got to be rational and reasonable if the black candidate passes muster the and clearly, budget. therefore, indicates a capacity mm. to develop, as yes. it were, to do the job. Mm. Yes. Um, could it be rational if the white candidate does much, much better in terms of service delivery? How would you I'm asking that? you. You see, I'm trying to figure out what your party thinks about mm -hmm. this, because uh, maybe I'm confused. Mm -hmm. right. I'm as confused as you are. Right? Because <laughs> I, I want to sort of know where you... What you, do, you don't be seem to be saying much different to what Mr. Nagawan is saying, mm -hmm. which indicates to me some surprise. I mm -hmm. thought you people pushed back against this and were talking about merit mm -hmm. as your major. Now, here it is merit, but it's merit plus. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we have to accept that because yeah. obviously if Mr. Nogawana is right and the 60% candidate passes muster, they're not as meritorious as the 85%, but they're more than good enough and our historical legacy dictates we must do the right thing. Now, are you in favour of yes. that? Yes, I mean, the DA's def approach to affirmative action or to redress is that of promoting diversity. And it's not simply tick box exercise of putting, counting beans and putting people into silos. It is the definition that we use is fit for purpose, where you look at things holistically. It's not just race. It's not just age. It's not just sexual orientation or gender. But do you accept that race is a major it factor a because factor. it equates with historical yes. disadvantage? Black people suffered. Absolutely. And I mean, for one of the quotes that stand out to me is that, you know, they, the, the argument is that if you were the brightest, most clever black kid in apartheid, and you were the stupidest white kid in our party. You were better off picking to be Yeah, the it was terrible white affirmative kid. action. Yes. But that's a good point for me to take the break, and then we can all reflect upon that and come back shortly. <laughs>